Hey guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and I am stupid excited today because my fish for my new 75 gallon Lake Tanganyikan tank are here. Now as you can see I haven't opened the box at all. We'll take a closer look in a second um, but I just wanted to talk a few minutes. In my last video I told you how I decide where I'm going to order fish but I think it's also important to mention um, shipping. You should always go with the fastest method possible. Yes, it's more expensive, but it's absolutely better for your fish. The faster they get here, the less stressed they are and the less likely they are to have issues caused by ammonia buildup in the bags, which can be really problematic. So we're going to zoom in and I'm going to open up this box and reveal to you which fish, which fish I chose. Now I paid for FedEx priority overnight shipping which is next day, guaranteed by 10.30 a.m. to my area. If it were to be late, you can get a shipping refund. Uh, not all areas have the same delivery time. Uh, if you're in a rural area, it can be by 8 p.m. If you are in a um, metropolitan area, it's generally way sooner. Um, again, I ordered from Dave's Rare Fish. He's someone I've known for a long time, but I've never gotten fish from before. However, um, I have sold to him before. Let's take a look. First thing I always do is examine each bag to make sure that the fish are alive and that there's no gross defects that I need to let the seller know of. You should always check and see what the guarantee is on the fish that you're purchasing, especially online, so that you can make sure um, to follow their instructions should there be an issue. Now, these are Cibrochromus leptosoma um, and Bibwe, which are similar to the sardine cichlids that are in my Shelly tank. And I ordered a bunch of them simply because I wanted more for the Shelly tank. The last seller I bought from, the fish did extremely poorly. Uh, a lot of them died, and these are the same variety. So I'll grow them out and then be able to add some more into that aquarium, as well as keep some in here. Now, the cichlids from this area are expensive, and that's because it is difficult to get them. Um, so even if you're breeding them, the fish tend to be a bit more expensive. I also ordered, ordered Parasipochromus uh, nigripinus. which should climb the rockwork in this tank, whereas the Cipochromus will inhabit more of the open area. Uh, another thing I did when I ordered, all these fish are perfectly healthy. Another thing I did when I ordered was ask Dave how he prefers for his fish to be acclimated, and similar to me, he really likes the fish just to come up to temperature, get them out of the shipping water and into the aquarium. The last species that I ordered is Alto Lamprologus species Compressicep shell, Sumbu, which are a teeny tiny little Compressicep. And these are the fish that I'm most excited about. And that's because they, at maturity, have the grumpiest little face you've ever seen. Now, I'll go into more detail about all of these fish after I get them settled into the aquarium. But as you can see, I had zero losses the fish look fantastic and we're gonna let them float in the tank for a few minutes and then get them into the aquarium i can't find my normal scissors so i'm going to use my aquascaping scissors i'm going to start with opening the compressor steps everybody's swimming around i don't see any red gills all the fins look intact and all i'm going to do cut open the bag and pour them through a net and add them to the aquarium. Now, if you were to have DOAs, you would want to take a photograph of the fish in the bag to send to the retailer. Make sure you get all the fish out of the bag. And gently release them. Oh, I'm so excited about these guys. Now we'll take a closer look at everybody once they're in the aquarium as well, though they won't color up for quite some time because these are younger fish. Next we'll do the Parasipochromus. Same thing. Now I like to cut the 
flat end of the bag rather than where the knot is to pour them out because it's easier for me to pour them. Again, you don't want to put any of the shipping water into your aquarium because it will have, no matter if the fish are fasted or not, no matter how they're shipped, it will have some sort of accumulated ammonia. We don't need to add that to our aquarium. Oh, these guys are so cute. Now the ones I'm most nervous about adding are my Cipachromus because in my experience they ship roughly. Uh, the last time I think I ordered 10 or 12 and I only have like 3 or 4 make it through, um, through the first 24 hours. So we'll see how these guys do. They are notoriously, notoriously sensitive and in fact most retailers do not offer a live guarantee on them. Now, a lot of times when you order online, the guarantee, if you have a DOA fish, is for credit. And this is industry standard for the most part, simply because once the fish leave the retailer's hands, there's not a whole lot they can do about how they're handled in transport. And especially if um, a package is late, there's not much that we can do. So a lot of times they'll offer you a credit uh, for the fish to reorder. guys are going to be so pretty when they're grown. Last bag. It's been so long since I got any fish, let alone fish for myself, that this is so freaking exciting. Always make sure you wipe off the drips on the glass because we want to be able to get a good look. We'll let them settle in for a bit and take a look at them in the aquarium, but already they're all swimming around beautifully. see those sardine cichlids really packing together and swimming all over. Now as they settle in, they'll move up in the water column. And the Parasiprochromus should hang out around these bases of rocks. And then we'll have the um, Sumbu shells utilizing the shells. So it's, it's pretty exciting to me. Now again, these are all juvenile fish. They are not at maturity. It's going to take them a while to get to a good size to really display their full coloration, but I think you guys will enjoy following along in the process with me with this aquarium. It should turn out to be quite stunning. You can see immediately upon acclimation, the fish are already looking quite good. Boy, are they fast. I realize that this may look like a lot of small fish and too large of an aquarium, but most of these, uh, the, the cyprochromas get to several inches, the parasips close to that too, though the shell dwellers do stay quite small. But again, I wanted to feature fish that I think need more attention, and these are never going to be cheap fish, they're never going to be available at most stores, but they are fish that deserve our attention. Uh, because they need to be preserved and they're all very breedable. You'll see as they mature that they're absolutely gorgeous and just really fun fish to keep. Now fish generally are not very colored up upon shipping and that's no surprise here either. Again, these are young fish, but just wait to see what they become. I think you guys are going to love them. But minutes after acclimation. Everybody is starting to settle into their little areas. And over time, these guys will establish territories and utilize all of the decor provided. You can see how healthy 
they look. They have nice round bellies. Their fins are intact. They're swimming normally. And these are all things we want to look for when adding fish to your aquarium. Now, the reason these guys all went into the display rather than into a quarantine is they're all from the same source. So this is basically a 75-gallon glamorized quarantine. And since there aren't any plants and there aren't any fish from previous sources in here, I'm just going to quarantine them all in this aquarium. If I end up needing to medicate for any reason, I can drop the water line to reduce the amount of meds that I need to do and make my water changes easier. It's been about 15 minutes and I just added some food. Um, a lot of times when fish are shipped, they don't always eat for the first day or two, but I just kind of wanted to see. Now all of these fish do appreciate a higher protein diet as they're all fish that eat insects or other fish for the most part in the wild. They are already eating. And I do find with acclimating the way that I did, which I can link you guys to my video on it, this is generally what happens. The fish settle in immediately and are ready to eat right away. Makes me think that we're not going to have any issues with this fish, with all, any of these fish. Oh, my shell dwellers are coming out. See them in the background there at the rocks? Let's see if they come up to the front. They're a bit more shy. Oh, you see them in the crevices back there? Yes. I can't wait to get video of their grumpy face. Look at that grumpy face. Isn't that incredible? They are so stinking cute. I love them. Wait until they color up, guys. Now, again, I got... 14 of the sardine cichlids, the Cyprochromus leptosoma. I got six of the Parasyprochromus uh, nigropinus and eight of the Altolamprologus species compressicep shell sumbu. So make sure you guys are subscribed with that notification bell on so you don't miss the updates on how these guys fill out, color up, and grow over the upcoming months. I think you're really going to enjoy it. As always, thank you for your continued support. Um, I will be at the Catfish Convention October 4th through 7th down in Herndon, Virginia, and I'll be doing an aquascaping display there on how to set up a hill stream aquarium, and I would love to meet a lot of you there.